Hi, this is Jennifer Gonzalez for Cult of Pedagogy. I'm going to show you how to do online collaboration using a fantastic bookmarking tool called Digo. More specifically, how to use Digo groups to do it. This is part two of a three-part series on Digo. In part one, I showed you how to use Digo by yourself to organize and take notes on the things you find online. Now I'll show you how you can collaborate with others, coworkers, classmates, or if you're a teacher, your own students. You do this with Digo groups. Groups allow you to collect items together with a group of other people and discuss these items within the group. In my Digo account, I have set up a few groups for studying Shakespeare. One for Othello and one for Taming of the Shrew. In the Shrew group, you can see the members over here. And then on this side, there is just a list of all the items that have been added. Any group member can add an item to the group. What's even better is that all members can comment on items too. This makes the experience truly collaborative. If you're a teacher, you could even make comments a graded writing assignment. To comment, I just click comment, type it in here, click post, and my comment will be attached to the listing. You add items to groups in the same way that you'd add them to a list in your own personal library, which I demonstrated in part one. So I find this article, click save in my Digo extension, and down here I click share to a group. Taming of the Shrew is there, I click that, select some tags, can add my description if I'd like, click save, and now the item is there along with the description that I gave it. If an item is already in my library but I haven't shared it to the group, let's say this one is not in the group, I click on it, click share to a group, click on Othello, and it's been moved over there. Groups also allow you to create discussion topics not tied to any particular item. To create one, you just click Topic, give it a title. I could tag it if I want. Post it. Now this is not going to connect me to any other document. This is a discussion in and of itself. And then people can comment on this one. You can filter your view in a group to look at all items like it is now, just the bookmarked items, which is only links to other places online, only topics, here we've only got two discussions actually going, and if you have a lot of images, and you may want to look just at images, right now I've only got one. You can also view the items by tag. If I click on criticism, there's several more. To start a new group, begin in the My Groups section, click on Create a Group, If the group name is already taken, you can add something else to it and see if that works. Right now I've just got this uh, avatar that they gave me and I can change that if I'd like to. I just um, go into Group Settings, I'm in General, click on Edit, and go down here, it'll tell me to change the avatar. You can upload a picture and change that to pretty much whatever you want as long as it's not copyrighted. Okay, now one last thing I'd like to show you is how you actually get these members in here. You just click on Invite People, and Digo gives you a bunch of different options. You can simply send to someone's um, regular email account, and that will send them an invitation. If they haven't already joined Digo, then they'll be prompted to do that, and then they can join the group. You can also invite from your email contacts or invite your Digo friends. Once you're already in, then a lot of this becomes much more um, quick and easy, but if you want to pull somebody in from the outside, then you can do it that way, and then they'll join the group. So that's how to use Digo Groups for online collaboration. If you're a teacher or work in higher education, take a look at part three of this series, where I'll show you some of the special features Digo reserves just for you. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.